Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. This is episode two of my Luminar 4 tutorial series. Episode one is right there. That was a getting started video. In episode two, we're gonna dive into the library module here in Luminar 4 and walk through kind of how it works, give you some basic ideas about setting up folders, organizing, getting photos into Luminar, and some of the things that you can do with the folder structure in Luminar. So let's just hop into it. Okay, so here I am in Luminar 4, and I'm in the library module, which is on this tab over here in the upper right. Just click on a library. Coming down, you'll see that you have some shortcuts, and then you have albums and folders. So shortcuts, as the name implies, just kind of gives you a summary of what's going on in your library. All photos, I have 142,126 photos in my Luminar 4 library. There's a drop down. You can see that it does organize it by year. And uh, so I've got 10,410 photos taken this year, 2019, in my library. You can break it down further by month and, frankly, even by day. So it's a, it's a great way to get a visual on how your photos have stacked up over time, right? Um, on this day, this is a nice little feature that was present in Luminar 3. You can actually click and say, on, you know, on this spe specific date in previous years, I took this many photos. So. In 2015, I took 1,042 photos on this day, so I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit curious. I have to click it, okay. It looks like I was in San Francisco on that day, uh, in, or in this day in 2015. So that's kind of how that works. I'm gonna go back to all photos, and now because I was clicked on a photo from San Francisco, it's gonna put me at that piece, uh, at that section, if you will, of my all photos view, which is here in front of you now. Okay, back up to the top, I collapsed that. Single image edits are any photos that you've um, added to Luminar just for a, what used to be called a quick edit, but it's a single image edit, which means you're not adding it to your, uh, to your library. You can add a single photo for a quick edit by just clicking on that plus in the upper left and saying edit a single image. I have one in there, which is the one that I used in that previous tutorial series video, video number one. I um, recently added 142,126 because I just basically, uh, a couple of days ago, stuck all my uh, photos that I had uh, ready to go over here in Luminar 4. Recently added it to and trash zero. Now we've got albums and folders. So folders are basically um, just like on, like you have folders on your desktop, for example. I have a Mac, I, I assume it's the same on Windows, but you basically have folders on your desktop or on an external hard drive that have images in them. All Luminar 4 does, and this is the same as in Luminar 3, it mirrors that folder structure. So when you add a folder, you're not technically importing the photos into a library. Um, it will keep track of all your edits in a catalog file, but the folder structure in Luminar is just whatever the folder structure is that you have on your existing hard drive. Now, if you wanna add a folder, you, let me just go show you my desktop real quick. I have this folder here called test, um, and it has you know however many photos that is in this test folder, and I'm gonna import that in a second. So it's got a 10 or 12 photos in it. That's a test folder right there. I also have connected an external hard drive called Luminar Photos, and within that, I have these multiple folders, Austin, Canada, Drone, Europe, Luminar 4 test, and US travel. Now, if you look over here, I've added all of those except drone images, and that's what you're seeing here. So this folder structure here is mirroring that which is on my external hard drive. Now, you saw I had a test folder. I'm gonna go ahead and add that just to show you how it works. You just click plus to add a folder, and it's already uh, defaulting to test, which is on my desktop. If I wanted to go add the drone folder, I could go over here to Luminar Photos, boom, 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 and click Drone Images, and you can see that I could add that folder with the subfolders in it. I'm not gonna do that. I wanna go back to my desktop, and I'm gonna click on Test, and I'm gonna say Add Folder, and you can see Test is right there, and it's gonna update the image gallery, and now it's 11. I said 10 to 12, pretty close. Now it's gonna default to taking me to that view, of what I just imported. So now that folder is right there, and you have a couple of options with that. 
Um, you can hold it's control. It's probably a right click on Windows on a Mac. It's control and you click it and you can now import images to this folder. You can add a subfolder. Let's just do that. Under test, let's call it best. This is going to sound dumb because it rhymes, but let's say this image is what I consider the best one in test, right? So now I've got um, 11 images in test, but in the subfolder best, I have that one, right? Notice it's not out. It didn't leave the test folder because it's still in that big folder, but it's been categorized as a best in my best subfolder. Let me show you this test folder. I'm going to close that. That's my external hard drive uh, folder structure. Under test, I now have best, and there's that same image. So they mirror each other, and changes that you make over here will impact Luminar, and changes you make in Luminar will impact here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image, drag it back, and this best I'm just going to get rid of, drag that to my trash. So now I'm back to having a test folder with these 11 images in it, um, if I can get that in the trash. Now let me go open this, and hey, guess what? Test no longer has a subfolder, and it's still got those 11 images. This image wasn't deleted, it was just moved back into the main test folder, and best was deleted and removed in my system, but you see um, how that works, right? I can create a subfolder here, and I can create one in my folder structure on my drive. I could do it either way, and I can move it, you know, um, delete it, or whatever. You can also rename this. So I'm gonna go Control, and I'm gonna say Rename, and instead of, um, instead of test, I'm gonna say best overall. I just didn't wanna say best again. Now I've renamed this folder best overall. And look at that, on my desktop, it's called best overall. So it mirrors um, itself, right, back and forth. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna change this back to test. So I'm gonna say control, rename. You can also remove, add shortcuts, things like that. But I'm just gonna say test. And just to prove that it works, I'm going to go back over here, and now it says test on my folder on my desktop. So that's how it works. Just keep that in mind. Um, another thing to think about, these other folders that are on my external hard drive, um, I have subfolders. So from an organization standpoint, I personally like to organize by location and date. So I've got an Austin because I live in Austin. I've got a lot of different folders, and these aren't all of my photos. Um, I have an external hard drive that has probably almost 300,000 photos on it, but I have 140,000 in Luminar 4. And so basically I've picked some of those folders, put them in this drive, and I, you can see I organized by location in Austin as well as date. Um, it probably shows a little bit better in this European file where I place uh, the name of the place I visited and the date, just to give me an idea. Um, it doesn't matter how you want to organize your photos. I think it does matter that you find a way that you like to get organized. I do it by location location and date. That's just my preference. Um, you can do it by whatever floats your boat, right? So that's a basic on folders and organization uh, and importing folders as well as the rename and that sort of thing. And I wanted to point out how uh, Luminar 4 the view that you have in Luminar 4 just mirrors the file structure that you're seeing on your external drive or on your desktop, wherever your file folders that contain the images may be. They just mirror each other. Okay, now let's talk about albums. Albums are different than folders. Folders are physical, right? Uh, they represent the physical file structure on your external drive or on your internal hard drive, that sort of thing. Albums are virtual. I think of them sort of like the collections feature in Lightroom, if that rings a bell. If it doesn't, disregard. But it's effectively a virtual grouping of photos. So what I can do is I've got uh, this photo here highlighted. I'm just going to click these three, and I'm going to say Album. And what it's going to do is create an album. Now I can go in here and title this. Um, I'm going to rename it. That was a control click, which may be a, a right click in Windows, I'm guessing. And I'm going to say this, call this prog uh, faves, if I could type. So my prog faves um, are now in here. So uh, keep in mind, these are, it's a virtual collection. So it just allows you to, um, without interrupting or, for lack of a better word, screwing up your physical folder grouping and collection, you can create albums which are virtual collections or virtual groupings of photos. So I could take photos from different places. I can go in here to all photos and uh, you know maybe let me get out of Prog. So let me just go past Prog in my library. 
Okay, here's something from like Austria, right? Um, I'm gonna drag that over to Prague Faves, and now I'm gonna need to rename that because it's no longer just Prague Faves, so it would make sense to call this Euro Faves. I'm making this up. But you can see the filter, uh, the filter, the photo is now in this album. So this album has, has four photos, which come from different folders down here. Again, it's a virtual grouping or a virtual collection. Um, it just allows you to create um, groups effectively from different album, excuse me, from different folders. It's gonna, I'm gonna confuse you. So let me, let me say that again. It allows you an album, which is a virtual grouping, allows you to bunch together photos from different physical folders, right? And so you might wanna do a faves album or you might have different pictures of a kid of yours, maybe one of your children, you know, hey, this is my daughter, so-and-so. I've got photos of her in different folders, but I wanna to group together all my favorites. This is gonna be my child favorites or whatever. And you can dump them all in an album so that next time your family's over, you can say, oh, let me show you my favorite photos of my beautiful daughter. And then you go into that album and you show it because they're all grouped and that does not move them from the physical folder structure that exists. It's a virtual grouping. I think that's clear enough. So I hope that that helps, but that is a difference between folders and albums. Albums are created virtually within Luminar. Folders are uh, a representation of the physical folder structure that represent wherever your photos may live, external hard drive, internal drive, etc. Now there's some other things you can do, including sync adjustments. So I'm gonna go in to that photo. I'm gonna say edit, and let's see, I will just go over here to essentials, and I'm just gonna hit AI accent and AI sky enhancer. I'm making it up here. Let's say that I like that and I'm happy. I'm gonna click and go back. Now I've got that edit, I can sync it to this next photo. Let's say that I like that edit and I just wanna do the same thing on the next photo. So all I have to do to do that is I have the photo that I, I edited highlighted. I can come over with the shift key, click this one next to it. And now you'll notice there's an orange box around the one that's edited also. If you see that little icon in the upper left corner, that means you've edited this photo. This uh, one that's unedited has no uh, little icon up there and it's outlined in white. But if I wanna sync those edits, I come up here to image and adjustments and sync adjustments and it's gonna just drop those edits and you can see that it's done and it now shows that little icon up there. So it basically just took the same edits from photo one and stuck them on photo two. So if you have multiple photos from a scene or you just like a particular look, you can easily sync those across multiple photos. Now if you decide you didn't like that, look on this particular photo, you can just click that one photo, go back to image and under adjustments, you can see that you can say reset adjustments and it's back to normal, and you'll also notice that the editing icon in the upper left corner is gone. Now, a couple of other things to be aware of. Uh, I'm back in my all photos, and um, I'm highlighted on the last one I clicked. I'm gonna click on this one. Notice that you have a couple of things here that allow you to uh, show different views, right? So this all photos allows you to come in, and you can do favorites and that sort of thing. So what you do is if you wanna rate this photo, if you just click on it, you can say image, and then you see that you have flag ratings. You can say favorite, rejected, etc. You have star ratings. So hey, I get, you know, it's a five star image. Man, that's a beautiful image. Let's make that a five star. Or you can set a color label. Hey, these are greens, these are reds, whatever you do. Um, you have other adjustments as well where you can do flipping and that sort of thing. But what I wanted to point out was the, uh, the, the labeling where you can do favorites and that sort of thing. And then you can come in and sort by those in your library. So you can come in and say, well, I wanna sort by, you know, you can go to all photos, but I wanna sort by five stars. I only wanna look at my best images or, you know, maybe red means unedited. So you wanna sort by red because that's images you haven't yet edited. And you can just come into your library, sort by those and say, okay, you know, who's it gonna be today? I'm gonna go in and edit a photo and you can, if you've color labeled them, or start, whatever it is, you know, you can pick it to do uh, however you like, but the point is you can apply ratings, stars, colors, whatever, and then come in and sort by that so you can quickly get to all photos that have the same sort of markings and then edit accordingly. Uh, you also have the option to edit, or excuse me, sort by capture time, and if you click on that, you can also see that you have other sorting options here. Edit time, rating, I haven't done any rating, so it doesn't really help to do that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to capture time. 
um, but I haven't done any rating, but there you go, it's back to capture time. You can also do by file type, type name, size, etc., and also ascending or descending. So a couple of other options in the library, which I think come in really handy. So ratings and labels and things like that, as well as the way to sort them in your library view. And that's really it. That's a high level view of the library and how it works. We covered how to get photos into the library. We talked about folders and subfolders and renaming and things like that. Uh, we also talked about albums, which are virtual groupings of uh, photos. And then we covered this shortcut menus up here. And that's really a high level overview. I'm certain that I did not answer every question. So if you do have questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope that you found this helpful. Please do subscribe, share, like that sort of thing. Leave me some feedback. And I'm also looking for suggestions for future videos. Should you have some ideas, don't hesitate to leave those. This was episode two in my tutorial series on Luminar 4. I'll be back really soon with episode three. So please subscribe, share, tune in, come back, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care and adios.